All right, gang, we're here for another uh, interview uh, of the Asset Protection Wealth Preservation Series. I'm delighted to have Brian Crockett. He's the Senior Vice President with Equitable uh, joining me on the retirement side. And he just has, his niche is pretty unique. And when we've talked with our clients about additional diversifiers, additional wealth preservation, frankly, I'd be remiss to not have him uh, share his story, share some of the things that he's bringing to the table. And so, Brian, again, thank you for being here today. Uh, although here is a new word, a uh, new definition in this new normal, I guess. But um, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of give me a little background uh, for, for those that are watching, kind of who you are, kind of how you got into this, and, and kind of just a little bit of background would be great. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Anthony. And great to be here. And um, yeah, so I, I work for Equitable. I am the Senior Regional Vice President covering Arizona and New Mexico and El Paso. And I've been with Equitable about 10 years and in the financial service industry about 22 years now. And uh, but for the last about 10, 11 years, I've been focused on the retirement income planning and, and, and really preservation of assets and protecting um, really for folks near and, and in retirement. And so I have the pleasure of working with financial advisors like yourself across those states and really just helping their clients educate them and, and really help them prepare for retirement. Of course, is, is in light of all the spending, nonpartisan comment, but in light of all the spending for like really the last 20 years, if we're being candid, you know, you, you can't help but think, what does that spending ultimately mean for people in retirement? How is that going to impact folks in retirement? And, and when we're talking about those folks, it kind of makes me think like, why do you think? And I've been asking this question to a lot of different people in a lot of different spaces in the industry. Why do you think that typical investors lag the market or are just kind of just not not trending as well as the market right i mean there's a whole science behind investor behavior and if you if you do a google search for investor behavior the results are amazing and and honestly it just comes down to we're we're emotional human beings it's it's we make illogical uh, and emotional decisions typically at the wrong time with respect to the stock market and you know jp morgan has a great chart that I use often in my, my discussions and presentations. And if you look at the last 20 years of the market, and the annualized return is north of 6%, but the average investor uh, is returning 2.5%. And so, I mean, that's double, it's more than double the return. And, and a, lot of, a lot of that's just due to getting in and out at the wrong time. And, you know, when the market's high, people tend to buy in. And when the market's on sale or down, we get out, which is completely the wrong thing to do. And um, I equate that to a department store. You know, when you go shopping or your, your wife goes shopping, do you typically buy things when they're on sale? Absolutely. And we should view the stock market that way as well. But it's just there's something up here in our in our DNA as as, as humans. Uh, we just make the worst decisions typically with respect to investing. And that, that's really kind of been resonating throughout our industry, especially in the last 10 years, the behavioral finance side, the greed, the fear, temporary loss, permanent loss, all of these types of things. And so, you know, I really appreciate your insight on that. I mean, that being the case, if we, if we take into consideration averages are 6%, people are pulling in sub 3%, your space is retirement primarily. So... Yeah. Why typically do we find that the first five years before retirement and then the five years immediately into retirement are so critical to people achieving or not achieving their goals? Yeah, I mean, that, that period is really, uh, really critical for a person to, you know, as they're getting into that kind of that red zone, if you will, of, all right, I'm getting ready to separate from service um, from my employment. And now I, you know, I, I cannot afford to lose if the markets don't cooperate, uh, especially as we near retirement, we're trying to hit that number, right? We've all got that number of, you know, all right, I think I've got enough dollars to generate income because all roads do lead to income when we, when we retire from work, right? We, we stop getting that paycheck. And so how do we take those assets and turn those into income? And if, if we happen to catch you know, a 2008 or what we thought was going to be a 2020, which obviously this market has just whipsawed right back up, which is incredible. You know, if we happen to retire at the wrong time or we catch a downturn in the market right before retirement, that significantly can impact, you know, our success. And can we retire the time we want? And then also in that, you know, and so really in that, you know, the first five years before retirement, it's really important to start taking inventory. And you know, this as a financial planner, but taking inventory of, all right, what do I have? And when do I want to retire? And, and do I, am I saving enough? Do I have enough accumulated? And, and you can really make those modifications. But 
if we also get into retirement, and, and this happened to a lot of people in 2008, that, um, 2009, that happened to retire, and then all of a sudden, you know, we caught the worst market since the Great Depression and had to go back to work. I'm sure you know somebody or had to deal with somebody that, you know, you catch a 38% market and you're drawing down your assets at the same time because you've lost your paycheck. That really can affect. And so it's important to take that inventory and just kind of be, be prepared for all scenarios the best you can. I love that phrase, all roads lead to income. Uh, yeah. We spend a lot of times chatting with clients about whatever, whether it's a number, whether it's a time frame, whether it's a lifestyle in that particular time frame, how that's all going to sort out. Thankfully, the large majority of my clients realize Social Security may or may not be there. Yeah. Pensions are, I don't want to say a thing of the past, but certainly, you know, in our, in our 20s and 30s and so forth, you saw airlines, motor company, you know, uh, automake, autom automaker companies, pension, dang, pension, dang, you know, just things going the way of the dodo, really. When you think about pensions and not really being there, I mean, I'm sure you were raised in the same environment, you know, the three-legged stool, stool yeah. right, back in the exactly. day. Personal savings, pension, social security. And now I just can't help but think we've got two of those that are seriously in jeopardy or even of being in existence. So right. are there, in your experience, what kind of tools or strategies could potentially, because again, all roads lead to income, mimic the uh, attributes or characteristics of social security or pensions. Yeah, that three-legged stool is really a one-and-a-half-leg stool now when you think about it because I think I read a stat recently and I, I might be a little off, but like it's like eight or nine percent of companies in America today offer a pension. So, um, you know, fewer and fewer are offering it. In fact, I read a stat just recently that some companies are now stopping 401k matching, which is pretty incredible um, for their employees. So who knows with everything going on today, but but yeah, I mean, people love the concept of pension or social security because no matter what happens, every single month you go to the mailbox and that check is there without question. And, you know, there's a lot of debate. Is social security going to be around forever? It will. It's an, it's an easy fix. They just delay the retirement age and things like that. But, you know, but for people who don't have a pension, um, how do you mimic that? How, how can you replicate that? And there are financial tools that can do that. And, and really the main tool is an annuity. Annuity is the only product in the industry that, um, that can provide a lifetime income for you and perhaps your spouse, no matter how long you work. That, that check will be in the mailbox each and every year. And so, um, again, it comes down to, you know, when we, as we're nearing retirement and doing our income planning, all right, how much, how much am I spending per month? You know, how much do I want to be guaranteed? And obviously, you know, we have this hierarchy that we use at our firm where, you know, the, the foundation is, all right, is my house going to be paid for? What about my healthcare and food? I mean, those are essentials that we cannot go without healthcare, things like that. I want to ensure that no matter what happens, I have income to cover those essentials. And that's where an annuity combined with your social security. And if you're fortunate to have a pension really is the bedrock or the foundation of your, your plan. I've got to push back a little bit because every single day, and I realize I'm, I'm one of the guys championing the fact that we should not listen to the financial news. We should not watch the news that our inputs ultimately result in our outputs. Yeah. You can't go a day, whether it's radio news, social media, annuities, bad. Yeah, they're horrible. They're just, they're, there's so many expenses. I mean, they're this, they're that. And, and, and you just kind of walk me through maybe why annuities, the perception are, are so bad, what, how we could effectively utilize, maybe, maybe some characteristics. I'm not saying specific products, of course, sure. but just, you know, what are some of the things that people might be like, oh, that, that might actually sound pretty good to me. Yeah, I mean, like, like anything, you know, there's good and bad, and there's bad annuities, and there's good annuities, and there's, you know, you go buy a vehicle, there's good vehicles and bad. So no matter what it is, you know, you can't just jam everything into one negative perception and say all things are bad. And you certainly would never put all of your assets into an annuity, just like you shouldn't have all your assets, perhaps in managed money or mutual funds or things like that. You, it's diversification. So the, the, the benefits, though, that an annuity can provide that we're, where clients and investors really like is when you break down the facts and you say, listen, you know, do you want this paycheck to be there every month, no matter what? And a client, well, absolutely. Well, tip, other investments can't do that. So if, if you have an investor or client that's looking to, to ensure that, you know, I'm going to get income for life, 
that's that's certainly a feature. Now, there's certainly a higher cost for annuities because it's like insuring. It's, it's insurance on your retirement. You know, we insure our house, we insure our car, and we hope that we never have to use that insurance. Why wouldn't you insure your retirement? It's, it's typically our largest asset is our 401ks or our IRAs. So it's essentially insuring a portion of it. Um, there's also, you know, downside protection from the market. There are features out there in, in certain annuities that can provide that. And in addition to death benefits, you know, you might have somebody that's charitably minded um, who wants to gift to their church or their, their alumni, you know, so there are annuities that you can utilize that have a guaranteed increasing death benefit that, um, you know, so depending on the client's needs and objectives, just like anything we do. And I think that's what makes our industry so great, Anthony, is every client that walks into your office, it's a different puzzle you're trying to solve. And I think that's what keeps us on our toes, keeps us kind of, mo you know, really exciting is everybody's got different needs, different wants. And so it's putting the puzzle together, but um, there's nothing else, you know, annuities have a bad perception, but when you really break it down, look under the hood, a lot of the features that they offer clients love. I think the, the moral of the story is let's not, the, let's not allow the, the, the tail to wag the dog. Yeah. Right. Exactly. On this, you know, we just, I just got an email yesterday from a client and they're like, look, the market's come back to some a fair amount. Like you said, it was it's been a whipsaw. Although today it's been taking a bath as we're as yes. we're filming. But uh, you know that's going to happen. Volatility is what it is. And they're like, look, we just feel like we've done a really good job of accumulation, uh, of building. And it just occurred to me. I was like, wow, okay. I have this interview today with you. The day after receiving this uh, email, and I'm thinking, man, this is a great example of where it might fit in that puzzle that you were talking about earlier. I had a good friend say something the other day about, um, you know, social security. Tell me, how, do you, and I'll ask you this question. Do you, do you know how your social security assets are invested? As far as I know, they're little IOUs inside yeah. of a, a briefcase in Dumb and Dumber. That's what, yeah. the, what I know. You, you don't care, right? Because you, <laughs> you, know, you, don't, you don't care how much equity your social security is in or your bonds. And, and it's really not, right? but you care about that income. And so with respect to an annuity, that's again, it can kind of help you with the market risk, keep you invested back to that. You know, one of the first discussion topics we talked about is staying invested and not panicking and selling out. Again, that's where kind of the protection that an annuity can provide can help you with that. And, and as long as it's all roads lead to income and you're getting that check, you know, it's important. Well, when you think about wealth preservation, particularly guaranteeing income, that's wealth preservation. When you think about, you mentioned your downside risk and so forth, that's preservation of, of, of your asset base of your wealth as well. So, um, well, we, we kind of got started with, you know, staying invested, but then we also kind of talked about the first five years before retirement and then the first five years after being into retirement. And then we talked about all roads lead to income. So I think the natural question to follow up with is, what is what are the experts saying these days as it relates to retirement income because i know that when i started in the industry some over 25 years ago you know the firm that i was with at the time was like five percent five percent five percent and then i don't remember exactly when there was a shift but i remember we were starting to chat with clients that maybe we should be a bit more conservative maybe it's four percent but then people would be like oh no no it's still five percent you're in the income space, you're in the retirement income space. My guess is you have more insight on this than I do. So kind of walk us through, what's the new number? Yeah, well, that's a great question. And, and you know, if you go back 25 years ago, like you said, interest rates were a lot higher. So that number, you know, could be higher, but we're in the lowest interest rate environment we've ever had in this country. And so, you know, um, the, the general rule, had, you know, has been 4% has kind of been like a safe withdrawal rate. So if I'm in, you know, a, a managed portfolio and I withdraw 4% per year and you look at the Monte Carlo charts over a 20, 30 or, you know, you know all the simulations of, of the probability of success, you know, a lot of times it's still not 100%, but it, it's high. It's like in the 89% range if you're looking at just 4% per year over a, a sustained retirement. But, you know, you got to factor in too that, you know, not only are you taking out four, you might have fees and, as well that would make that number bigger. Um, so a general, you know, numbers, you know, 6% total per year. If you look at that, um, you know, over a 35 year retirement, you have a 23% chance of success. So think about this, Anthony, I'm going on a plane ride here in a couple of weeks and I get on the plane and, and, um, pilot comes on and says, Hey, Brian, you we're, you know, we're going to Austin, Texas. And Hey, by the way, we've got a 23% chance of success. I'm going to get off that plane. And I think you would as well, but 
But Mr. Bill Bangan was kind of the father of the 4% rule. In 1994, he, he wrote a, uh, he was a financial advisor, just like yourself. And he wrote a white paper on this. And, and that has been kind of the general rule. Now, most recently, there's a gentleman in our industry who is brilliant by the name of Wade Fow, and he works for the American College. Um, and his latest number was 2.6%. Oof. That's in light of interest rates and everything we're going, longevity risk, right? People are living longer. So, you know, I, I think I think about that 2.6 number. And if you sat down with a client and you said, all right, here's what we've got in accumulation assets, you can take 2.6% out of this. Your client's gonna be like, How am I gonna pay my bills? Most likely, right? And and you know this, oftentimes they want seven or eight or nine percent. And you gotta say, hey, we gotta slow down so we don't run out. So 2.6 is tough, and that's partly because of where the market's been and where interest rates are at. And so it's a tough number. Now there are other, you know, solutions that, um, you know, can guarantee higher numbers than that. And so there are things out there to help you kind of insulate that, but 2.6 is tough. Well, man, I got to tell you, if all roads lead to income and the expert is saying 2.6%, yes. really what that reeks to me is, or resonates to me is we need, to have personal accountability and, and, and really boost that number. Like if we were thinking it was 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, like you said, everybody's different. Yeah. We need to reassess and take stock of that. And that's, that's part of this whole journey. So. And that's why look, people right, work with you, man. That's why they work and they got to have a financial plan. You know, it's so important to have a financial plan and know where everything's at and where it's going to come from. Well, man, I, I really appreciate your time. This was great. All roads lead to income. That's that's really going to be the, 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 I probably will hashtag that when we nice. put this, all roads lead to income. So awesome, man. again, it. thanks for your time. Thanks for your insights and expertise. And, uh, and we'll catch up with you again down the road. Thanks, Anthony. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.